Yes, yes. Are you all old friends, or how did you come together on this? I'm a fan of hers. I loved her voice. I'm a fan of his. Fifty-twos, yeah. So I sent her a little note, so like, so she'd have a chance to say no without being called on the phone. You know? Yeah. Said, Would you be interested? And, I said you know, yes. Yeah. So she said yeah. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. For those who don't listen to lyrics, what's Candy about? It's about this girl named Betsy, basically. But <laughs> Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. Oh, so didn't this, go. you yeah, wrote this, and this somebody, is from your past. Yeah, somebody that really existed. It's just, it's just when when I was like a lot younger, like about 20 years ago, I had this girlfriend who was even younger than I was. She was like a teenager, mm -hmm. and she's just one of those magic girls that you have when you're really young. Like she was just really beautiful and just sort of pristine, and she could do no wrong. And we were just we were real in love, and then, uh, you know, as we got older, sort of things, like, things just messed up, basically. Yeah. Some of the things went wrong, and, you know, we didn't have the maturity to deal with them or anything, <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. So, basically, you know, and then it's somebody that, like, ever since then, again and again, at certain key times, I'll think about her, and just, just the way we were then and what it meant, you know? Yeah. You're more innocent when you're younger. Yeah. yeah, a little bit, you know, you haven't done so much stuff, and, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kate, have you ever had somebody like Candy in your life? A male Candy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sugar cane. <laughs> well, speaking of, I, had a ex, I have an ex-husband named Brian Cocaine. C-O-K-A-Y-N-E, that was his real name, so it would have been Kate Cocaine. But I didn't change my name, so. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but you still... Yeah, Think yeah, well, we're still friends. Yeah. He doesn't exactly haunt me, you know, but we're friends. Usually when that happens, it's because the person was your first lover, or that's been my experience. Like, mm -hmm. you never forget the person that got the first one. Yeah. You know, and I read... <laughs> you read about that. Yeah, yeah, and I read that you lost your virginity at 20. Now, was it to this candy person? No. Was it? Was, it? Okay. No, it was somebody, somebody older, older than I was, a few years older than me at the time, and, and she was like, well, don't you want to, you know, get into this? And yeah. Like, well, I don't know, you, you know, seduced? can't we... Yeah, I was seduced. You were seducted. Uh, yeah, 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 I was like, can't we just kind of mess around tonight, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I just wasn't sure, because I'd heard this was a big deal, you know, the first time you <laughs> do this is supposed to be like a big deal yeah you know so and it was a really i was really stunned after it i lived i was like whoa what happened this is wow and like so, so and i was really disturbed kind of disturbed about it because i thought well what if it had been maybe it would have been more fun if it was this one or something that yeah. i had first and i or someone I, younger i took her bite i said i want to go home and I, and I took her bicycle and I tried to ride. She had this bicycle and I was tried to ride home on, and I hit a car head on because I wasn't thinking, you know. I just was like, oh wow, you know, bam. And I hit on this car. And I didn't get hurt. I just sort of, just sort of flopped off. And, and, was, and then after that, I like wanted to experiment, you know. He's like, oh boy, let's do this all the time, you know. <laughs> I've yeah. tried on just about anybody, really, <laughs> for a while, for a while, you know. Well, it's the first experience now, usually that's, I mean, see, I, I'm I, talking about usually, I'm not yeah. Masters and Johnson or somebody, yeah. I'm just talking about my own experience. My first experience was a nightmare. I mean, you talk about my, just let's mess around, did you do it well and do it all the way? No, I didn't do it that well at all. Oh, you didn't do it well? I didn't do it particularly, no, I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't particularly, she did most of the doing, really. <laughs> you know. Later, I think I've done it well. <laughs> a few times, anyway, I imagine, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, no, but, not that time, no. She did most of the doing could she also did, mean uh, that maybe you didn't have sexual intercourse at all. I, we had it, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was there. Yeah. I was there, you know, in the... Right there, you know. It was, things were together. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, let's get back to music. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a couple quotes, and these are both from Rolling Stone, involving mm, rap music and related subjects. Um, Iggy, you said that critics are much more into rap music than it warrants. What does that, that mean? That guy asked me, he said, well, well, a lot of critics say rock is dead and the only true music now is rap. And what I said, I said, look, it's, it's really good music, 
but I think there are a lot of a lot of critics who will want to they'll want to let somebody else be bad for them. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes they'll play up the imaging part of it more than just the music. And like some of it's, you know, like any other form of music is a lot of it's not that good too. Yeah. But it'll be like they'll really play up the imaging until until finally, until enough of those people doing that form of music get off the street, then they'll go look for somebody else, you know, it's even more down. Syndrome. You know, they always want to look for the down person, yeah. you know, and that it, there's a certain truth to that, so I said what I thought, you know. Yeah, but, and, and, and you know. quality kind of is a good transition into what you said to Rolling Stone, because your, your quote was specifically about two live crew. You found two live crew offensive, but everyone has the right to be stupid, was your comment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I've never seen them live, but I've, you know, seen clips of, and I've heard their album and everything. And I, as a woman, I find it offensive, but I think everyone, there's too much repression happening now. And there's too yeah. much, you know, curtailing of our freedoms. And I think, you know, we should be able to do whatever we want as long as it's not going to hurt anybody. You know, I, yeah. I really think it's important now to take a stand so our freedoms aren't, you know, taken away from us, the ones we already have. Yeah. Okay. Um, who were your idols when you were coming up? Who did you oh, listen to? Gosh, I listened to James Brown. Mm -hmm. Hot pants. Yeah. Ow! Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, uh, oh, I have a million idols. Yeah, how, how about female vocalists? Oh, I love Dusty Springfield, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Um, jazz, I liked a little a lot jazz of, in your Yeah, my, my dad was a guitarist in oh, a big wow. band, so, you know, he turned me on to all these singers and... And, and you were heavy into Bo Diddley and actually got to meet heavy him. Into the, yeah, I, I met him. I didn't meet him. Like, I was in the elevator with him at the Hollywood Roosevelt. Uh -huh. and, and I've been in these situations myself sometimes where people, like, will approach you too, you know, like, Whoa, they get all, and I was really shy to say anything to him. So I just <laughs> sort of stood there next to, there's Bo Diddley and his sheriff's hat on, his badge. And I just, you know. His music is really, like, hits the root of a lot of stuff. I mean, his rhythmics and what he's doing, it's a, a musicians know, like, it's the root of a lot of stuff. It's really important. So I just waited till he got out of the elevator, and I just said, Mr. Diddley, you're the greatest, you know, just to let him know that he was really up there. You called him Mr. Diddley? Yeah, Mr. Diddley. Diddley. Yeah, well, I could never call, yeah. I would never, hey, I would Bo. never feel familiar enough to say, hey, boy, because, no, uh, you know. Yeah. To, to me, he's Mr. Diddley, unless he says, oh, call me Ball, fine. But no, yeah. it's, that's a person of, to me, that's, he's like right up there with, you know, Einstein or anybody. It's yeah. like a, really, you know, he's like a scientist in what he does. And, you know, really important person, important American. Mr. Diddley knows Mr. guitar. Mr. Diddley, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Did you attack a car once? Yes. <laughs> what, with a tire iron or something? I didn't like the girl that was in it. Oh! <laughs> Oh, okay. What, I did what it with a hand axe. It was a Mercedes, yeah. <laughs> what had she done? She was just being, like, uh, uppity. Like, you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. She, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was, I was a starving musician. She had more money than I did at the time. Yeah. And she was just, just generally being, you know, a bit... <laughs> Sleek for a <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. No. <laughs> it's like, what kind of car do you drive? Yeah. Here's what I drive, baby. <laughs> I drive, I drive this axe. That's what I drive. <laughs> this is Kate, that's Iggy. Thanks for coming by. Kim Cottrell. <laughs>